Hello everyone, so in my previous video I have derived a nice identity involving integration of a function and its inverse. So let's first we'll look at the setup. The setup is here f inverse is a inverse of any function that is f of x. Both function f inverse and f are bijective as well as differentiable. Now one more thing is f is defined from a to b to c to d in both close intervals and here the initial conditions are f of a is equal to c and f of b is equal to d. Then if this condition is true, then integration from a to b f of x plus integration from c to d f inverse of y will be equal to bd minus ac. So in this video, we'll be using this nice identity which involves integration of a function and integration of its inverse. So in my previous video, I proved this is equal to bd minus ac. You can click on i button, you can check my previous video. Now in this video, we'll be using this nice identity to calculate this integration which would be very difficult to integrate as you can see the function integration 0 to 1 integration e raised to power e raised to power x by 2 d of x plus twice integration from e to e raised to power root over e ln of ln of x so here this functions will be very difficult to in integrate individually because you'll not find a function whose derivative of this function that function will be this again and again for this function again ln of ln of x you'll not find a function whose differentiation of that function will be ln of ln of x again so individually they are very difficult to integrate so by looking at this problem you can see if two integrations are given maybe we can use this property so for that we need to check one thing let's say this function is f of x so I need to check that inverse of this function is ln of ln of x so that I can apply this property. So let's say f of x is our function that is e raised to power root over e raised to power of x. Now I want to check this function is inverse of this function or not. So let's say this is y is equal to e raised to power root over e raised to power of x. Now I'll be taking log on both sides with the base e. So here on the left hand side I'll get this as natural logarithm of y is equal to ln of e raised to power root over e raised to power of x. And here I'll take this power outside. So I'll get this as ln of y is equal to root over e raised to power of x and ln of e is equal to 1. Now again I want to remove the root over so I'll be taking log on both sides with the base e. So I'll get this as ln of ln of ln of y is equal to 1 by 2 ln of e raised to power of x. Now I can take x outside so I'll be getting x by 2 is equal to on the right hand side I'll be having ln of ln of y. Now I want x, x is equal to twice ln of ln of y. Now x is nothing but f inverse of y. So f inverse of y will be equal to twice ln of ln of y. As you can see if this is my function f of x then inverse of the function will be it's quite visible here inverse of this function is twice ln of ln of x. Now this is the first thing I've checked here I want to check two more things. In the next slide I'm going to check then I'm going to apply this nice integral identity now I've checked if this is f of x then this is f inverse of x now I want to check one more thing here I've said that f is a bijective function that means we will be having two choices either the function will be increasing or monotonically decreasing or monotonically increasing so here I want to prove first f is monotonically increasing because in this I have taken f of a is equal to c and f of b is equal to d. So I have assumed in this case f of a is equal to c and f of b is equal to d. So that's why I got this result bd minus ac. So as you can see it is exponential function so it must be increasing in this domain 0 to 1. So first thing I have checked it is inverse is written on the other side. Second thing is it is monotonically increasing yes. The third thing is I want to check this functional values. So our function was f of x is equal to e raised to power root over e raised to power of x. Now I want to check this value f of a is equal to c and f of b is equal to d or not. So f of a. So I'll be putting here f of 0. f of 0 will be equal to e raised to power root over e raised to power 0. That will be e raised to power 1. As you can see here f of when you put input 0 here you'll get this as output as e. So yes f of a is equal to c. This is true. Similarly I want to prove that f of 1. f of 1 will be equal to e raised to power root over e raised to power 1. And that is e raised to power root over e raised to power e. As you can see here the upper limit when you input here 1 the upper limit will be e raised to power root over e and that is also true. So here I can use this nice integral property that is the value of this integration will be product of upper limit that is 1 into e raised to power root over e 
negative times the product of lower limit that is 0 into e. So our final answer will be e raised to the power root over e and that will be all.